I don't want to start by being a little bit vulnerable, let you know I'm a human being. I brought here my paper. This is my first paper I handed in in Teachers College. I was a science student in Windsor at the University of Windsor. This is handwritten in my neatest handwriting. And um, I got it back uh, with a three out of six. This was a description of how fantastic science fairs are. And I was a science major and I remembered science fairs. The second paper I handed in after I got the three out of six, I got a six out of six by talking about open-ended creative problems and I got my cue back in 1986-87 that what, what teaching should be like. Really the, the question is what is science is the same as the question what is learning and it's about discovery. This is the first school that I taught at. I had a fantastic few acres worth of hundred year old oak trees next door to the school in London, Ontario and we used it for all kinds of things but the outside of the school didn't parallel the wonderment of the inside of the school where we had science fairs and I was introduced to the idea of having kids do these wonderful projects and my students you know they had to have the display they had to have this and that but mostly what they did is they went in a book and found an experiment someone did and they copied it and they had a, they had a display that was science to them and the paper that I had learned the most from was when I, have, are you familiar with voice to, to, to di dictation, voice to text? Back in 1987 I had that. I went over to my girlfriend's house, she had a typewriter, and I, I told her about, I had an idea, and she typed it out, and in the end I had this unit study on uh, rebuilding Atlantis, where groups did this really creative stuff. It was really quite cool, and I was looking for that paper and I found this one. Anyway, I, I knew that this wasn't the answer. So the way science was done in my school board was a kit would come with a whole bunch of stuff. And one of the units that came was one on soil. I was supposed to teach the students how to do soil. And the kit was all there. And then there were all these lessons, cookbook experiments. Do this, then this, and this. Eh, voila, that's called eh. You've learned about soil. Congratulations, move on. I took that kit and I said, no. In faculty of ed, I remember, science is not that. Science is about investigation. So I said to the kids, we got this kit. What are we going to do with it? Uh, they came up with a list of questions, ideas, and what are you going to learn about dirt? So think about this. The biggest question they had was, what's dirt made of? Go ahead, figure that out. How are you going to figure that out? That's the science. That's the hard part. The book had this real cool thing where you put a jar with water and dirt and shake it up and it comes in layers and it described the layers. My kids had to figure out what dirt was made of. The questions they came up with were far better than that though. Which, which dirt was better than this? Which different types of soil? How, did it, how was it when it was near the roots of a tree in the forest versus on the path versus in the garden versus from my home versus the, the soils my plants grow in? And then they got into the whole playing music for plants thing. Anyway, they did these experiments and the idea was they had to have conversations with me regularly to decide what they knew. And when they were finished, they had to have conversations with everybody else to share their learning. Conversations to share their learning. You've been to a conference before, right? So I found my friends, two new teachers that were new to my school the second year I taught there, Peter and Pauline. These are two of, two of the most important people that changed the way I teach. But I said to them, you know, you know, my kids have done this science. Do you mind if they visit your classroom and talk about it? And they did. They went and shared their science experiments with the junior teachers and the primary teachers classes and it was awesome. And then we said, well why do we have to stop there? Why don't we have a conference for the kids? We'll bring in this speaker, a keynote thing on science, and then we'll have all these breakout sessions. So Bob McDonald was one of the speakers we had at the time. He was doing a TV show called Wonderstruck, which you may know. We also had people that were that lived in Biosphere 2 for a short time. They came to our school and did these keynote addresses, but then the kids went to workshops. And it was really cool, but I went to Peter and Pauline and said, you know, something's missing here. And so the next year, what we did is, we had the kids who did their science do the keynote. The best presentation got a chance to keynote in front of all the primary and junior kids at the school. And after that, all the other kids that did projects got a chance to present their projects to an audience of real learners. And they had to make it interactive. They had to have conversations about what the science was. Here's another question for you. So they had to do things like, which bubble gum flavor lasts the longest? And that sounds like a really fun science experiment until you have a conversation with me and I sit down and say, 
how, how are you going to control for differences in saliva? Before the gum, after the gum. What would you have for breakfast today? You're going to compare your saliva to that person's saliva? That isn't going to wash. You better figure that out. When we're talking about deep learning, when they're trying to solve a problem and present it at a conference, they got into it and went to places they never would have gone if they'd done the, the little bit of just following the, the recipe. But this led 20 years later, well, 25 years later, to me understanding the value of conversation and the importance of getting people together to have discussions around teaching and learning. Uh, a group of teachers in this picture were on the edge of Algonquin Park where we took them away from Wi-Fi and internet, much like this room, and left them alone for a couple of days to sort of try and write about what was the most important thing in education. The relationships they built and the understandings they have has changed many of the people and the way that they work and forevermore. These people, when they get together, they find one another and continue that conversation. There's, a, there's three people here that are in this picture, but my arm took the photo. Incidentally, these photos are from like 1987. I paid like a buck a piece for most of these to get developed. And they're not like Instagram special effects. They actually look different because they do. But then you get into really brave conversations when you have conversations such as when I walk into a superintendent and I say, you know, you standing on a stage talking to people is not the best way to change special education. Why don't you let the teachers figure out what they need to talk about what they're experts at, what they want to know, put them in groups and let them talk. They call that an unconference, when in reality, that's where the real conferencing takes place. It's the exact opposite of a real conference where you just listen, you actually engage. But it takes a brave conversation for someone to change the way they do things. I've since gone on to host conversations because I see them important. I'll host every five or six weeks or so. I'll go to a restaurant in London, Ontario where we have free Wi-Fi and I'll have an all call bring your iPads, bring your, your notebook computers, your handheld devices, and let's talk about how you can use them. It was mentioned earlier by Ron, I think, teachers on their own time do their best learning. I have evidence of that, but it's about conversations and trusting relationships. So one of the people that came to my school, just to, to close this in full circle, finish in science, this is a science classroom at my high school. I've been there for six years. This September is the first time I've seen desks in groups. The kids are actually having conversations about science instead of watching teachers' PowerPoint conversations. And the only reason the change happened is because of a conversation that I had with a teacher who led to another conversation, which led to a department conversation, which led to a change in action. A conversation started it all. So it's about conversation and connecting people, connecting ideas. And I didn't know it back in 1986 when I was in Sault Ste. Marie having a picture taken. On, there's a real photo, no, no special filters, but it's about getting the roots together, the grassroots together to share. And that's how I think change happens. Thanks.